Good morning, creative community, and welcome back to Stanford University in beautiful Palo Alto, California. My name's Savannah Peterson. Delighted to be here celebrating International Women's Day with you at the Women in Data Science Worldwide Annual Event here on campus. 400 fabulous attendees here with us in person today, with thousands around the world in 57 different countries virtually. But most importantly, I'm excited to introduce our third guest joining us here today from Lima, Peru. Mariana, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Quite a journey for you coming up from South America, our first South yeah. American guest on the show. You've been a part of the Woods community now for three years. You started as a volunteer, as an usher, you were just telling me. Yeah. And now, this year, you get to come back as an ambassador. What, is, what does that mean? What does the community mean to you? It, uh, like, if I can start by telling you like the story of how I ended up with WITS. Um, so I was like in the very start of my data science career at university, and I heard about like the WITS community because my professors are also ambassadors. So they were doing already like some events with WITS every single year, and oh, I cool. wanted to like know more about it. And I happened to have family that live close by, so I was like Convenient. like coincidentally. Um, close to the dates that they were having like one of their conferences and I wanted to be here but the sh like all the tickets were sold out and I asked if there was like some chance that I could come and yes. yeah and they offered me this volunteering op opportunity so I would be like an usher and also attend to the conference which was amazing because I got to meet so many people that were already like ahead in their careers in data science and it was truly like an inflection point where I was like oh I really love this path and I love what I'm doing. How important is it to meet people a few steps further down their journey in, in data science, but really for any woman in technology? I feel like it just gives you like um, options of what you could do in the future. Like it shows you um, that maybe it's not that hard to go for that position in one job or like aspiring at some um, like academic position. Like there are so many paths and like it gives you like a range of things that you could do at some point. And it's more about like, what you want to try, what you're more interested in. So I think it really, it's inspiring because you see other people doing it. Yeah, and you see them applying data science in, in a lot of different verticals in a lot of yeah. different ways. Every time I come to one of these shows, I bet I'm like you, I see a new application or a different way that AI is going to change our future. And it's really, it's really inspiring and it's super exciting. It, you, you seem so confident on your journey now. When you were younger, how did you identify science as a path you wanted to take? It was actually a pretty tough thing for me. Yeah. Because um, like at school, like we have this regular test where you are like, before going to uni, decide like which major you're gonna be in. Yeah. And I was very confused and I was like, oh, maybe I should do something like with letters because I, I'm really like, um, like, always the social impact, it's always caught my attention. So I wanted to do something related to that. And I didn't really know like where, yeah. like which path, because like there are many that kind of take you there, but I wanted something at the same time that could be very practical, like, you know, like for example, coding, it's really direct and you can see like the results as you learn how to code, as you learn how to apply certain techniques. Mm -hmm. So I kind of find it through like, while I was in uni, I took some elective courses that um, allowed me to see like the different courses that they were having in the like the whole major. Yeah. And also um, something that I really like about my university is that they have, um, as we are not that big of a class, um, you always had the chance to talk with like graduates that already went through the whole program, and you always had the chance to like contact them or talk with your professors and kind of see what you know, which path you could be yeah. in. And even though there's a, like a regular curriculum for everybody, mm -hmm. you could kind of go through the, the directions that you like the most. Yeah, and do those life design interviews with folks to see how that yeah. had panned out into their career. You mentioned that the classroom was very intimate and that helped your learning journey. You also mentioned that your major is relatively new. Yeah. Go on. So this is a major that's probably like What is your major to speak Oh, there? so in Spanish, it's like the translation would be something like information engineering, but we see a lot of like machine learning, deep learning, you yeah. know, data science topics. And it's a very small like, I mean, they're constantly having like new majors as well. But like this one is one of the most recent compared to like the other old, older majors as economics and administration. And my university at its core, it's like a business school. And you know, data is so important for 
any kind of business and even for like countries to like analyze them and get insights that could be helpful for making the sh decisions. That's exciting. Do, do you feel like there's a lot of support from your university? Yeah. And because it is the new one, there must, there's got to be a lot of excitement. Yeah. I mean, you're studying something that's right at the peak of the hype curve. It's pretty awesome. In addition to machine learning and, and data science, you also, well, this involves that, but you have a really interesting personal passion project that I want to bring up that matters. Here on theCUBE, we had the pleasure of interviewing the Deaf and Hard of Hearing group at CNCF, the Cloud Native Foundation at KubeCon, back in uh, Chicago earlier this year, and we'll hopefully again in Paris in the next couple of weeks. Peruvian Sign Language is a project that you're building something around. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I, as I was, was mentioning before, I was always like brought up to like social, you know, problems that could be happening at a community. And when we were having our decision for like our final project, this is a Paris um, project, so I also have a teammate called Luis Lazarte, and we are both doing this for our final project uh, of our major. Wow. And you know, we found in common that we really wanted to do something with social impact. And we we having like a brainstorming of different ideas mm -hmm. that we could do of like problems that, that are happening right now in Peru. And something that it's going on right now is that there's not that much accessibility for yeah. like deaf people. And you know, there are more than 300 like sign languages around the world. So like each country has its own. And we decided to like go with with it. And something that we also were really interested in is not just like b bringing a solution and you know just because we like to code about it, right? But to understand and to have that empathy for the community, from the deaf community, and understanding if they actually need that. And we kind of what what we have framed is um, this system as a learning support for people that want to learn sign language. Because you know, um, when you're learning sign language, it's not like you can write notes about it and like, okay, you're gonna do the sign like this way. Like you have to practice it. Right. And because it's so bisuggestural that you really have to be like actually like doing it and you know having that feedback if it's correct or not. Right. So we limited it to the Peruvian sign language alphabet because it's a, like an undergraduate project and. Um, it's also because we only have like a year for making the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And we're in the last mile almost. We have the deadline for July, so we are working on that right now. That's so exciting. What's the reception been like in the Peruvian deaf and hard of hearing community when you talk to them about this project? So we actually had an interview with Adelaida Rivadeneira. She's, um, we have something, in, I don't know if it applies also for the US, but we have something, some term called um, like linguistic um, system mm -hmm. and basically it's a deaf person that also is in charge of teaching sign language. So we had an interview with her and her interpreter because we at this point we don't know how to communicate fluently in sign language. Um, so we got to understand like the pains that they have and mm -hmm. how it is very hard to like go to a hospital or a bank and oh my gosh, having yeah. to communicate because people don't know Peruvian sign language and there's not always somebody that could be there for you. Yeah. So, and even for schools, like even for like middle schools and high schools, there are not enough um, professors that know sign language. So that's why um, we want something that could help. But like mm -hmm. from our side, because it's like our commitment as a community to also help others to feel more involved. Absolutely. Do you think that AI, ML, data science are going to be tools that we can use for great improvements in accessibility over the next few years? Definitely. I feel like um, especially because, um, for example, having a person like in, like presential, it's very hard. Like. And you know, for the number of people that need these kind of services, like to be like some kind of translator, or like to have this accessibility, it's going to be hard to have it like one one one. Yeah. So um, in that case, I feel like machine learning and artificial intelligence really helps to make it a little bit more massive and to reach out the communities that actually need it. Absolutely. Have you learned some Peruvian sign language as a result of this project? Yeah, I remember how to say. Um, I always remember. Show about us. This. So this is October, <laughs> and and it's really typical because it's like you're um like you know taking something because in October we have this um like party to Señor de los Milagros. It's like religiously, and it's kind of like mixed it up so you can do like if you're like um I don't know how to say it, but um, it's, in, es it, in Espanol. <laughs> um, can I say in Spanish? Sí. Okay. 
hay, hay una costumbre del de Señor de los Milagros, que hay una procesión, entonces llevan el anda como si estuvieran llevando la procesión del Señor de los Milagros. Oh, yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. you got some, it's a, it's a beautiful parade, it's a procession yeah. behind so you. Yeah, so it's very yeah. related to something from our country, Yeah. so that's what makes it unique. And I love that too, everyone yeah. would know, yeah, oh, that's so cute, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember that next yeah. time I'm in Peru and I need to do some sign language. We learned, Noah and I learned at our session in Chicago that, that this is cloud. Mm -hmm. so we were at a cloud conference, obviously, so I had them teach us yeah. a little cloud. Um, hopefully the audience can see that as well. Uh, wow, really fun and, and beautiful. What a beautiful example. Thank you for sharing that. You brought up something really fun. You're very passionate about about mentoring the next generation the same way that you came yeah. here and got inspired. I love that you're, you're empowering high schoolers, you're working with undergrads, you're doing datathons. You, you said something when we were getting prepped that caught my attention. You used an interesting data set in this yeah. last datathon. It was Harry Potter data. What was that like? What, what did that look like? So when we make the first Python workshop, um, we kind of like wanted to introduce people to the WITS data set, the mm -hmm. healthcare data set. But we saw like the reception of some students was like, okay, this is a huge data set. It has so many columns. So it's kind of hard if you are just starting to learn, like to just like see this massive data set and don't really know where to start. So what we were thinking is, okay, maybe we can make it a little bit simpler and you know, something that people can relate to. It's like Harry Potter. I found that data set on Kaggle. And Amazing. Yeah, so I just adapted some things. Like, you know, um, it was a really good data set. Like, it, had, um, it was reviews from, from Harry Potter movies. Mm -hmm. So you could have the, like, prediction if whether somebody would like it or not. Right. And I kind of adapted it so it has missing values and, you know, kind of make it similar to the case of the WITS uh, data set. Yeah. So people could understand what kind of challenges they could find in another data set and kind of make it a comparison of what they could do. Mm -hmm. So with that, um, I was very happy because when I presented it to the high school students, they were like, oh, okay, now it makes sense. Like, now I understand why, for example, um, there's there are two data sets come, the train and the test. And they were asking me like, oh, but I don't know why, like in the test, there is a missing column. And you know, part of like the, the challenge is to predict that missing column. Right. But like sometimes um, if it's something like, like concepts and like different, you know, like, I, f I felt like in that moment, it was like they were having so many new concepts thrown at them that they were very confused. So with this Harry Potter example, it kind of simplifies things mm -hmm. and kind of make a roadmap for them. It makes it easier to talk about the pieces of the yeah. puzzle, so to speak, in a way that's when, when the lexicon isn't all yeah. new. Oh, I think that's really great. And I think, I think that's exciting. I can imagine there were some silly yeah. conversations too, if you're just listening yeah. around. Oh, that's, that's so fun. And, and so did you feel like, did, did you, could you tell that that made it easier to approach some of these new concepts? Yeah, definitely. It was like, I love that. Yeah. That, that is absolutely fantastic. Woof. Okay. So, so what's next for you? So actually, this is my last semester at undergraduate, and I'm well. We have to finish our project. So far, we've done the data set of actually for the data set, um, as there isn't any like recording of Peruvian sign language. Uh, at that point, we are. Yeah. Because if you compare, for example, with the American sign language, there are many data sets that you know you have that accessibility to like try on them and like try your model. Mm -hmm. But in the case of Peruvian sign language, there isn't anything. So we had to make it from scratch, and we asked our friends to make the, the sign language for us. So in this case, as it is the alphabet, it's not very much complicated. Of course, if we wanted to make like, um, like more complex uh, sentences, we will need like actual um, people from the deaf community to, to help us. Right. But at this first phase that we are just focusing on the alphabet, um, we ask help for our friends. We memorize the whole alphabet and, you know, make them make different repetitions of, of the signs. So that would feed our model. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love that. Yeah. So, so you and your community have have learned Peruvian sign language to train yeah. your models, so that you could, wow, that is awesome, and also probably really eye opening for your friends in terms of how to be more inclusive. Yeah. So, what are you going to do after you graduate? I'm planning on continuing on my machine learning path because I'm really into that topic. Yeah. And I also like computer vision, so maybe doing something, but always, um, as I was mentioning you, the social impact. I'm I'm very like mm -hmm. brought to um, whatever I do. I wanted to make it for good, like you know, having tech for good. And um, I'm really like that's my motto right now. I love that. Okay, I have three questions for you to close us out. Hopefully, pretty short and sweet. Cause this has been absolutely fantastic. 
you are an inspiring woman. I'm sure Thank there you. are, and you interact with a lot of, I mean that, and they, you interact with a lot of young people and, and people at different ages. And I don't, I actually don't like when we're ages or we talk about someone early in their career. Someone could be older in their career and decide that they want to get involved in data science and yeah. machine learning. Never a better time than right now to be in the industry. What would be your advice to someone curious about getting started or just getting started in our space? You know, something that really helps is like finding that topic that you are passionate about. Like it could, it could be Harry Potter, it could be sign language, it could be anything you you are really interested in. Yeah. And once you have that, it's easier to like kind of see in okay, um, what has been done in this field, mm -hmm. um, what techniques have been applied, and kind of going like uh, step by step into understanding why is it being applied to it. Because you know, um, in the range of different techniques that are in data science, like ones are better for certain topics. So yeah. if you kind of limit and you know you have your own like thing that passionates more than most, it will help you to not feel like you know like overflow with information. So you have like something that you like and something that will let would let you like learn easier. I, I love that advice, and I am definitely going to clip that out as a soundbite for folks listening, because that's just it. If, if yeah. you're not into what the thing is, it's going to feel even more yeah. overwhelming than it is already. If you're applying this to, to a concept that you already really love, or one of the things yeah. that actually the production team and I were doing earlier today was asking various LLMs to explain extremely high con uh, uh, extremely yeah. deep and complex technological concepts to us like we we're five-year-olds. And it was really cute and, and kind of hilarious, but I think it's just that. Find, find the thing you don't mind learning a lot about, so when you're yeah. faced with that information repeatedly, you're not sick of it. And you know, it's, like, it's like how sports can teach people about statistics. Harry yeah. Potter can teach you about data science. I think that's an absolutely outstanding point. Since it is International Women's Day and we are all obviously celebrating ourselves, I do know there are plenty of people in the audience who are looking to be better allies to women like us. What would your advice be to the allies out there on how they can empower women in data science? I think um, it would be mainly like listen. Like sometimes um, we could be even in the same room, but we are not really paying attention. And I think it's to like be present and actually like pay attention to what's going on in your surroundings because the answer is there. It's just sometimes we, we probably are not very um, like there in that moment mm -hmm. um, and you will, you will get the answers as well. I like that. There's a lot that can be learned from listening yeah. and, and actually processing no pun intended, maybe pun intended, actually yeah. processing that data and, and, and hearing a, a woman's journey. I think that's fantastic. Mariana, I could talk to you all afternoon. I'm inspired. How can people follow along with the work that you're already doing right now with Peruvian Sign Language and everything else at school in Lima, as well as with your future journey? So um, in my LinkedIn, we will be um, putting like all the updates. Right now, we're still at the data set pre-processing, so it will take a while, but hopefully for July, we'll have some more news. Fantastic. Well, I personally will be staying tuned, and I'm sure a lot of our guests are. Mariana, thank you thank so you. much for being here. Thank you for bringing the heat. We're grateful you're a part of the WIDS community that you've spent all the time here. And as an ambassador this time around, very exciting. Thank all of you for tuning in to this fabulous great start to our all-day coverage here at in Palo Alto, California at Stanford University for Women in Data Science Worldwide Annual Event here on International Women's Day. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for empowering baddies in tech.